Hi, everyone. Welcome to Writer of the Week. Today, we're here with Dr. Joanne Doucette, author of On a Quiet Street, the latest in the Dr. Pepper Hunt crime novel series. Welcome, Joanne. How are you? I'm fine, Melissa. How are you? Great. So you have a very interesting background with regards to how the wilderness of Wyoming became the muse for your novels. Can you tell us more about that? Sure. Um, I moved to Wyoming, Southwest Wyoming, when, just after I finished my graduate program in psychology. And up until that point, everything in my life had been very internally focused, learning about how people work psychologically. I've been a psychologist and a writer and also lived only in the cities of the Northeast. So going to Wyoming, which was a great adventure for me, was also incredibly different. And what I found was I was very overwhelmed by the, like, the vastness and the openness of the landscape. Southwest Wyoming is actually a high desert. The wind blows all the time. And it's a very kind of um, op eerie, kind of severe place to live. So at first, I just wanted to run away from it. But then I realized over time that, that while I'm drawn very much to the intensity of emotion and intense thought process, the external environment in Wyoming was also a very intense place. And so I kind of put the two of them together and it was from that place, just kind of opened up something in me that allowed me to begin to write my first novel. So the thing that initially was kind of frightening in its severity became something that kind of led to a, a deeper place in my own creativity. Oh, that's fascinating. And you describe your crime novels as focusing on the human experience at the intersection of psychology and law. What do you mean by that exactly? Well, I, I am a, a practicing psychologist and some part of my practice has been to work within the criminal justice system. Both of those systems, psychology and the, the legal system, have their own rules that, that govern them. And when mostly with psychology, you're interacting with people with the intention of understanding them and healing them and helping them to sort out the problems in their lives. Most of the time within the legal justice system, there's something has gone wrong. People have done broken a law and we're looking for for justice and also um, punishment rehabilitation when those two things come together um, when people who are, have some kind of psychological issue or mental health problem actually do something that causes them to break the law then the, then the two systems come together and it can be really interesting to see how they work together for psychologists working, taking the psychologist mindset of healing into the justice system and trying to figure out just what about this person's psychology makes them either culpable or they should be considered to be like not responsible because they're not fully mentally competent. So it's lots of interesting stories come from that juncture. Right. I, I imagine it would introduce uh, compassion as well into the, the justice system. And that's so that's a conversation, right? Between so between the people who are interacting with the individual through through the justice of the attorneys, the judges definitely do look to psychologists who work in that area to explain to them what's going on with this person because it's territory that they don't have any familiarity with. And how do you come up with the plot twists and turns for your novels? So my, my stories are very character driven stories. And by that, I mean, um, I really do try to develop as full as possible, like real functioning people. And I've had the experience that many writers have had that as you put the character on the page and are at times surprised by what the character is going to do almost independent of what you're intending to have happen. And so I, I somewhat follow like, the inc like what would happen if this person were put in this situation with another person with 
these kind of characteristics and kind of let that develop. I also am um, very much a fan of um, you know, true crime fiction and have been for a very long time. And so both of my novels actually started with um, my interest in particular real crime and the sort of the aftermath of that and the questions, what if this happened? And so I start with that and then I let the characters take over. And can you expand on um, that and tell us a bit about the storyline for On a Quiet Street? So um, On a Quiet Street takes place in a small town in southwestern Wyoming. And it is um, a very sort of like insular community where most people know most of the other people in town. And the story opens with a young woman who is about to be married being murdered about a month before her wedding. And the characters who comprise her world, the, her brother, mother, close friends, are all kind of tied together by some incidents that occurred in the past um, within their church community during the time of uh, when sexual abuse was rampant within the Catholic Church, um, their, their lives became entangled even further. Things happened in the past that were never disclosed or discovered or discussed, and as is often the case, the power of the secrecy um, leads to unexpected things happening. Um, and so. Ma, the protagonist of On a Quiet Street, who is a psychologist, Dr. Pepper Hunt, is involved in kind of interviewing these people. She happens to have in therapy the brother of the murdered woman, which is partly how she gets involved in the investigation. And you recently wrote a blog post, and I quote, I was always a writer, putting words on paper still the chaos in my mind. And you go on to say that you believe everyone inhabits a world of secrets far more interesting than what's shown on the surface. I love that idea, and I was wondering why you believe that. I know we're all unique. Do you think there are some people who feel less and have less of an internal world than others? Well, I think that there are certainly people who are more inclined to pay attention to their internal world than others are, but I do believe that most human beings have the capacity um, for, for looking inward. Um, we go through life and, and experience um, minute by minute the things that are happening to us. And some people get somehow do not get reinforced for paying attention to that. But my experience at, both as a psychologist, as a writer, the most interesting characters are those that are um, kind of paying attention to the other layer of life that's not immediately obvious uh, on the surface. And you um, have an enormous amount of depth as shown in your blog posts. And it's thought that metaphorical thinking is a sign of the highest intelligence as well as making connections between seemingly disparate threads. What drives this rich internal life and what inspires you well, I have just um, always been fascinated with um, like what is going on inside other people. I happen to grow up in a family where um, that level of experience was not talked about um, very much. And so it became sort of like a forbidden and highly interesting part of life. When I first started to read more adult books, my um, first book that really kind of turned on the light for me about how, how fiction can be the road to self-knowledge and growth was Betty Smith's a, a Tree Grows in Brooklyn, which is a story of a young girl who's growing up in a family with lots of dysfunction, um, who herself turns to reading as a way out of um, sort of the everyday kind of dragging experiences of life and into a different kind of transcendence. And so words and stories have always been, for me, um, the path to self-knowledge and awareness of, of other people. Now it's time for Tweet of the Week, where we do a deep dive into your tweets and select one for you to tell us more about. You recently tweeted, I'm thrilled to be listed with these popular thriller authors, referencing a MissCareerGirl.com article listing 13 chilling thrillers to keep you cool this summer. How did you find out you were on the list and how did that come about? So um, my um, 
my publicist, um, Book Sparks, um, did a, a lot of work in terms of getting my book seen by people who would be interested in reading it and and passing it on to other people. So I'm sure that's that was how the book came to their notice. And it really it was kind of very thrilling to see my name and my book listed with other um, writers who I have very much enjoyed reading, like Denise Mina and uh, Ruth Ware, Laura Lipman. Those are names that I that I know books by them I have loved in the past. So it was really extremely exciting to to see the book there. And your first novel, Last Scene, got very good reviews with Kirkus calling it an auspicious first novel. On a Quiet Street is garnering the same acclaim with Glady Brown Kabongo, number one Amazon best-selling author of the Fearless series, saying Doucette masterfully weaves a gripping, suspenseful tale of duplicity, secrecy, and murder. So you're going to read an excerpt from On a Quiet Street. Can you set the scene for us? I'm sure. I'm, what I've chosen to read is the, the very beginning of the book um, in order to kind of entice people to want to know more of the story. It also says a little bit about the protagonist and also introduces the, the second major um, character who is a, a Native American detective who works very closely with Dr. Pepper Hunt. So I'll just take a few minutes to read that beginning piece for you. The church bells rang out at six o'clock in the morning. The exact moment the sheriff's department received the call about a dead woman in a house on Cedar Street. Sometime in the pre-dawn hours of the first day of summer, Stacy Hart was strangled in her home on a quiet street in Rock Springs, Wyoming. It was the first homicide of the year and the second time the Sweetwater County Sheriff's Department engaged my services in a murder investigation. I'm a forensic psychologist trained to work where the mental health and criminal justice systems intersect. Most of us who thrive in this field are drawn to it because of some dark and unresolved experience in our past. The process is known as repetition compulsion. We keep going back into the same sad story, hoping to rewrite the ending. Chapter one. Jack Swales looked down at the woman he loved. She was lying on the steps to the greenhouse. One of her moccasins had come off and her white shirt was torn at the shoulder. She wasn't breathing. What he did next would make all the difference. Make a call or climb in his truck and haul ass out of there. No one would come for hours. He'd be history. His life would be his own again. The way it was before he followed Stacy into the cafe where she hijacked his heart and changed everything. Her wild golden hair reminded him of Dante's painting of Helen of Troy. He knew nothing about ours. A hooker who worked for his uncle had taped the picture over her bed. He knelt and kissed the marks on her neck and smoothed the bloody curls. A crazy urge rose up and he snapped a last picture. Her phone blinked where it had fallen near her right hand, outside the circle of blood. Remembering the last thing she'd asked of him, he reached over, picked up the phone, turned it off, and slipped it into his, the pocket of his vest. A rolling stone, she called him, a guy who wouldn't stick around to put a ring on her finger. But what the hell, she belonged to Connor, planned to marry him. And now this, what is done cannot be undone, he told himself. Outside on the wide porch, the, el the air held the night's chill and a clean smell rose from the wet grass. He shivered and rubbed his arms. As much as he wanted to resist, he pulled out his cigarette and lit up. With the first breath, a slicing pain seized his chest, a heartache he'd never outrun. He smoked and thought about everything that had happened since he first stepped into this house and the way he changed it with his hands. After a while, his thoughts came clear. He owed her something. The phone in his hand was heavy with the weight of his destiny. He dialed the number to summon the sheriff. 
On a Quiet Street is available on Amazon and you can find the link in the description below as well as the link to Joanne's website, jlducet.com. Thank you so much for being here and sharing with us today. Thank you, Melissa.